What I have here is a circuit that I use to enhance my Halloween displays. The first part of it is a control box, which is just basically a sequencer circuit that turns each output on one at a time. It's adjustable, so I can adjust how fast each one's on and off. And it also has a command input that will turn them all on. In my displays, every once in a while, I have something happen, and it's kind of neat to have all the eyes on. The other part is the actual eyes themselves. Just these little boxes with two LEDs in it. The finishing washers enhance the glow of the LEDs. Now, the idea is, is that if you've ever seen a horror movie and somebody's going through the woods, you see all these eyes out there, and that's what this simulates. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how I built the box and the eyes and I hope you enjoy. Here's the circuit completed. I've populated the board. I've got uh, the LEDs to show me which uh, eyes are supposed to be on. I use a green one for the clock and the yellow LEDs for when the command signal comes in. And here's the potentiometer. Here's the box that I was using. I've marked the spots for the RCA connectors here in the back. And I've got everything marked for the status LEDs all in front plus the power switch. Notice that see it in the light here how oh, I got two holes already behind the tape those came with the boxes I got a bunch of these boxes on bulk because they decided to uh, use them for something and then I guess the whole project went uh, south so I got a pretty good deal so all I gotta do is cover them up if I don't use them here we are I've got the holes drilled out here's the front bigger holes for the switch and then here's the back and of course you can see the two holes that are pre-drilled which I will end up covering up before I finish the project. Okay, I got the populated board inside the box. I've put all the components on. I do want to say that I did make one modification. I added an opto isolator to the command connector so that I could use any power source. I'm not just limited to using the power source for all the projects. Here's the front of the box. See the red LEDs to indicate which output is on. Green one is for the clock to tell me the speed of the clock and the yellow one is for when the command signal comes in I do see that it is coming in. So I'll turn it on and you can see the clock blinking and the LED telling me which output is on. Now this is variable so if I turn the knob I can adjust the speed and then what I can do is Go ahead and show you if I put a command signal in. See the yellow LED came on and all of my outputs are on. On the back, we have the eight connectors for each one of the eyes, or if I use this for something else, whatever I'm using it for, my power connector, and then my command signal and of course you can see I use a little PVC here to cover up those two holes that I had in the box. And here's the box completed. There's the front, I went ahead and marked everything and then here's the back all nice and marked. And now it's on to making the eyes. Here's the basic box that I'm using. Okay. And I've already got one set up where I'm going to put the eyes. They're a half an inch off of the center. Where I'm going to put the connector. And then where I'm going to put the two mounting screws. Alright, I had the boxes all drilled out. As you can see, there's the hole for the connector. And then I got the two holes on the side for the screws. And here's the cover plate, and I got the two holes for the two eyes. So what I'm going to do now is to go ahead and melt the finishing washers in there to give it that glowing effect. Okay, I got my cover plate in my vise, and here is the finishing washer. Go ahead, just place it on top, and kind of line the hole up. My soldering iron is already heated up, and I'm going to carefully put it in there, and then 
lightly press. Now the soldering iron will transfer its heat to the finishing washer which will then melt itself into the cover. Now you want to just kind of watch the edges because you know it's hot enough and it's melting through the plastic will kind of start forming over the edge of the finishing washer. Now you don't want to push too hard because you don't want to pop it through all the way through the cover hole. So there's the first one. Line the second one up and do the same thing. Want to be careful obviously that the finishing washers will still retain their heat for a little while. So after you're done with this, you want to um, make sure they sit for a little bit. And there we go. Now the best way to test this is when it gets cooled off, to go ahead and flex the cover. If it doesn't pop off, it's not going to pop off, at least through normal use. There's the cover and I've already done the LEDs. I've gone ahead and soldered in 100 ohm resistor on both positive leads and then tied the positives and negatives together. All you got to do for this step is to go ahead and size it into place and then go ahead and take some hot glue and glue it down. Now don't be stingy with this because you do kind of want to have this a little bit watertight. This will be out in bushes and uh, wherever else you decide to put it and you don't want too much water to get in here. There's a cover. I've gone ahead and squished the leads from the LEDs down to give uh, a little bit more room for the connector. Please make sure that you do leave it open here in the center. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and take my glue gun and put glue over top of all the leads to hold them down and again to give them a little bit of a watertight seal because if you're using this like in bushes and it happens to be a rainy or foggy Halloween you want to try to keep as much water out of this as possible obviously water and electronics doesn't work very well together so go ahead with this cool off and then we'll go to the next step And I put one of my boxes in my vise and I got the hole drilled and what I did with this step was is I've got a nut already on the tip of my soldering iron. The problem is, is when you press into the plastic to heat up the nut it ends up damaging the threads. So what I do is, is I'm just using this to make an impression of the nut. I carefully stick it in there, heat it up and almost right away because of it's been on your iron for a while will make the indent to it and if I take it off and bring it closer to the camera hopefully you can see how I made the impression but what will happen is, is this will hold the nut in place when I put the screw from the other side here's one of the boxes where we have the hex index melted into there now I do want to say that you will have to take a knife and trim down a little flash from the melting and probably take a drill bit and resize the hole. Now this might seem a little obvious to go ahead and stick the screw in there and put a nut on there. One of the things I found out when I prototyped this many years ago was that you do eventually loosen up the screw in the nut. So one of the tricks that I learned is, is that you can take some cheap nail polish and use it as a kind of a Loctite. This will lock the nut and screw into position, but will allow you to loosen them later in case you damage the threads on the screw. Whereas if you just use glue, it would be there permanently and you probably would destroy the box trying to get the screw off. I've already taken my RCA connectors and pre-soldered some wires on them. So all you gotta do is go ahead and put it through the center, put your rounding washer and the nut into place. Now to give this a little bit more again watertight you probably want to run a little bit of the hot glue over top of this to make sure that uh, we do have a better watertight seal. And this is set to solder to the top. I've attached the wires from the connector to 
the terminals of the LED and let's go ahead in there and solder them in place. Wires are soldered to the LEDs on the top cover. All you gotta do is go ahead and squish the cover down. Make sure you're not pinching any of the wires. And then go ahead and screw it shut. So here we go. Here's the sequencer running with the eyes all attached. And you can see as it counts up, each one of the eyes turns on. And now in a moment I'll show you what it looks like in the dark. Okay, here we are with it being dark and you can see how the sequencer counts up. You can see each one of the eyes turn on. Now ideally you want to put these at different points of your display so people can't tell that they are being uh, turned on and off in some kind of sequence. This particular circuit you could drive up to three eyes off of each output. So you can make two more sets of eyes and then place them all over the place attaching three per output. I hope this enhances your Halloween displays. Thank you for watching.